Hello, graduating class of 2020. I'm Abe Luwabadiju. I've had the great pleasure of serving as your student government executive vice president and the chance to speak to you today. I think we can all agree that the last few months of our senior year did not go as we expected. And I'll be honest, when I reflect on my senior year, it's clotted by this heavy loss. Loss of ceremonies, banquets, games, meets, and a proper goodbye to the last 12 years of my school career. And yes, I could dwell on this loss and I could talk to you today about all the things that could have happened, the memories that have been ungraciously taken away from us, but today is not centered around loss. Because my fellow seniors, this, this is a celebration, a time to reflect on all our accomplishments despite the situation we are in. Our last four years were filled with laughter, tears, ups, downs, every emotion. And now we're here, days away from our last day of school, the moment we've been waiting for, our senior graduation. And yes, we won't be walking across the stage. That is sadly our reality. And although it might not feel like an appropriate time to celebrate, that is all the more reason that we have to. We did it. This is your moment. Spend this time with your family, friends, and reflect on all the amazing things you have accomplished. Class of 2020, I am so proud to stand here before you. And it is a great honor to have had classes with you, talk with you, exchange smiles in the hallway, and be friends with you. I miss all of your beautiful faces and I can't wait to see you again. So wherever you're watching this, I hope you take the next couple of minutes to truly relish in the fruits of your hard work. You deserve a celebration, and I'm very proud to be a part of it. Hi, everyone. My name is Amen Gasha, and I've been blessed with the opportunity to serve as your executive student body secretary this year. Now, as we begin, I would just like to share a few words of encouragement and hope in the form of poetry. This poem is entitled 2020, A Brief History. So it begins as she wrenches you from her grasp at the bus stop that first innocuous day. In spite of every scream and pout and tear as you begged if you could stay, but mother knows best. So when you, convinced this is some kind of test, see the big yellow vehicle come tumbling down the road and screech to a halt, you begrudgingly let go of your mother's hand and watch the tears slip from your eyes just to see where they might land. Go on, she says. She begs. And that first step onto the bus might have been a step right off the ledge, but so it begins. You clasp your character-themed book bag, nearly trip as your shoelaces trail, find your seat, and soon enough, the bus sets sail. So it begins. So it began. Here we are now, years later, no longer children, no longer holding our parents' hands, none of us even riding buses to school. And while our book bags might not be quite as cool as they used to be, here we are. 13 years have likely passed, and it's hard to believe that this unprecedented time might be our last, together. But take heart. Most moments in life are a prelude, a beginning, even here, even now, relegated to our homes, somehow it still begins. Just like it began on that crisp August morning as you stepped into your first school building, or another when you took your first test, frantically scribbling in answers for the first time, craving sleep, craving rest. It begins right now, just like it did then, as you won and lost sports games again and again, from tryout to tryout, 
From practice to practice, as new doors would open, even as trials left your confidence stolen, life began. It began at fifth grade celebrations and our first step into middle schools as we shifted our minds from specials to connections and then again to electives as we gradually adopted a new set of perspectives. It began when we took our first high school course or pulled our first all-nighter after an evening of games or rehearsal or a night spent on TikTok, days when it would have been an underestimate to call us tired, it began as we groggily pulled ourselves out of bed at 6 a.m. or sometimes 7, wishing we could just tuck ourselves back in. But with unspeakable strength, we made it through four years of memories during which we hopefully grew. Since that fateful day when we heard our parents say, go on, ushering us onto that yellow bus, much may have changed, but much has also remained. We are still students, if not in a high school, then students of life. And we are still growing, and if not in height, then growing in light. We are still learning, and if not in classrooms, then learning what the future holds as the future looms. And we are still beginning. Just as we did then, still we do now. And in five days, five years or 10, when we've grown into accomplished women and men and humans, I hope that we'll say that even pandemic couldn't keep us away from grasping what the world had to offer, what the world had in store, that we never stopped seeking and searching for more. Outside of Brookwood, the world might stand still. But success can be granted to those with power and will, still a tradition of excellence we seek to maintain. So join me in this refrain, say it's simple and plain, that over its future and its past, the class of 2020 shall reign. So from the comfort of your homes, I exhort you to stand, close your eyes and take a look back at where it began. And with conviction, I urge you to say that we're not here to play and as morale wears thin, still we are a class determined to win. And so here we stand. And so it begins.
Hello, my name is Ella Thomas and I served as your Student Government Association Executive Historian this past year. Here we are, the month of May of our senior year, our last May while in high school, the May that we have been looking forward to for the past 13 years. Without it even needing to be said, this May is not what any of us pictured it to be. Despite this ever important May being full of online graduations, hours of TikTok, and pounds of sugar and flour for baking, we thankfully have 12 and three quarters of school that we can reflect on and think about fondly. Whether you've been a part of the Brookwood Community Schools your entire life like myself, or you joined the Bronco family at the top of your senior year, there are some moments that we can all share and connect through. I bet you can vividly remember the first time that you walked through Brookwood stores. The first time you entered the commons and had the quintessential first day of school thought of, where am I gonna sit? The times you're walking through F Hall and see a cockroach crawling across the floor, and I know for a fact that it wasn't your last. The times you're walking to your next class and you ask the person you're talking to, how much time do we have left? And then begin to sprint because you only have one minute left and you're walking from upper A hall to the trailer park. The times you do the subsequent walk of shame to the tap office. And for those of you who never got a tap for being late between two classes, I applaud you for your commitment to punctuality, but you clearly never had a crush on someone in which you did a detour from the most direct route between your two classes so that you could spend an extra few minutes with them. And it shows. The time you pulled an all-nighter to write that paper that you've known about for weeks, but decided to procrastinate on until the night before. And then, the next day in class, after getting two and a half minutes of sleep and drinking five plus cups of subpar coffee, your teacher extends the due date. The times an office aide came into your classroom and you did a silent prayer that it was for you because you could not bear another second of physics. The times you're in line for school and the minutes on the clock are slowly approaching 724 and you realize that you're not gonna make it in time. So you decide to turn around and head to Chick-fil-A or Starbucks cause you were gonna be late anyways. This probably happened a bit more frequently this year as the bell rang at 720 rather than 724 and those four minutes were vital. The times in the hallway where you get aggressively shouldered or you'd pass a tiny freshman and you ask yourself, do they even go here? or the times two sophomores are showing aggressive PDA, or you pass someone in the hallway and think, why can't teenage boys just shower? The times you spend Friday night in the Brookwood Stadium, whether you're cheering from the student section or the sidelines or playing in the marching band or on the field itself, we're all united toward the common goal of winning the game and making it all the way to the playoffs. The times you email your teacher to round your 86 to an A, the times you ask your teacher for 25 hours worth of service points the day before the point sheet is due. The times there's only three minutes left in seventh period and you think to yourself, God, I do not want to go to practice. The times you get back that test that you thought you got an A on, but you actually got a 73. As well as the times you got that test back that you, got, you thought you got a 30 on, but you got a 73. The times you went on a date, but your mom had to drive you because neither of you had your license. The times you could tell someone just got their license as they proudly brought attention to themselves by swinging their keys on their lanyard. The times you went to Alexander Park in downtown Lawrenceville for pictures and then dinner before homecoming. The times you walk past the assistant principals inconspicuously because you know you're breaking dress code. The times you pack up for the bell and your teacher says, we still have three seconds. The times you hope your partner is not going to be in class so you don't have to present your project because you know you're not unprepared. Even before high school, we have so many memories to think about and smile. Think about in middle school where an outfit consisting of basketball shorts, Nike elites, and tennis shoes, all different neon colors, was considered fashion. Think about orientation and the dreadful sadness when your best friend was not in the same pod as you. Think about when you had to face the wall during silent lunch and when you would beg to go in early for study hall. Think about when you had to ask your parents for $4 in the morning for a Chick-fil-A biscuit and an ice. Think about Thrive on Friday mornings when half of us there were motivated by being with our secret crush. Think about making your first Instagram account and your bio went something like CMS, I'm a believer, too blessed to be stressed. Think about honor ceremonies during school when you would just hope that you got one. The times when you forgot your PE clothes and to make matters worse, you were running the pacer test. Think about the times you had to appropriately budget your money at the book fair just so you could get the new Hunger Games, four colored pins, and the coveted smensels. You know, elementary school had some pretty awesome memories too. 
Remember when you felt so cool because you got the most pledges for the Boosterthon fun run? Remember when you felt superior because you were the safety patrol for the quarter? Remember when you walked in a single file line in the hallway with one finger over your mouth to keep you quiet? Remember the fear that you felt when you would have to pull a card or get a check? Remember the excitement when the Elf on the Shelf lady came to read, with, read to us? Remember the hardest three minutes of your life when it was Red Cup at the beginning of lunch? Remember the excitement you would feel when you walked into the gym and the parachute and the scooters were out? Remember looking forward to Fridays when the ice cream lady was there so you could get your strawberry shortcake or blue Italian ice and eat it on the swings? Remember when you joined fifth grade chorus because everyone was doing it, even though you could not hold a tune? Remember losing a tooth and everyone was begging to see the hole? Remember indoor recess? Remember brain pop? Remember reading rainbow? Remember field day? Remember nap time? Well, probably not because you were asleep. Whether you've experienced just some of these or all of them, we have all had an amazing 12 and 3 quarters years with the sweet memories that will make us both laugh and cry. Each of these moments has helped to shape who we are today and who we will become. One important part of these memories is the people in them. These memories are so special because we got to experience them with the people who have been there for us through our ugly and awkward stages to the best nights of our life. Whether you've known these people for all 13 years or just one, each of us have found people that have had an impact on us. Whether they made your year or ruined your night, there should be some level of gratitude because each encounter will equip you with the experience and the knowledge to maneuver all future situations. These people have become more than friends. They've become family. And family is not to be forgotten. Each and every one of us has had the pleasure of being a part of this amazing Brookwood family. So, as we start new chapters of our lives and move to different parts of this country and the world itself, I hope that you never forget the impact that Brooklyn has had on you. And you recognize that to some degree, they are the reason you are where you are. After we look back on all the things that Brooklyn has done for us and meant to us, we need to look forward in the future to see what it can do for us then. Own the Brooklyn name proudly and continue the tradition of excellence. And, oh, <laughs> how can I forget? Go Broncos. Hello everyone, I'm Shelby Brown and I've had the honor of serving as your Student Government Association Executive President this past year. And I'm Mia Boncaran and I've enjoyed serving as your Senior Class President this school year. These past four years at Brookwood High School have been filled with trials, tribulations, and memories that we'll cherish for the rest of our lives. Our class is no stranger to changes, especially in the last two years, but we've come out the other side unscathed. We recognize our persistence as we commemorate the accomplishments that we have achieved over the last four years at high school. Out of all 850 of us, we have 327 honor grads, 16 out of which have a 4.0 GPA. Over half of us have taken an AP course, and 287 graduates worked their way to become AP scholars. Including those, our class has collected a plethora of academic accolades, with our 10 National Merit Scholarship semifinalists, 20 dual enrollment scholars, and our two military academy appointments. But enough about our excellence in academics. Brookwood has a history of exceptional student athletes and does not stop short of this year's seniors. From the past year, we've had 16 region championship titles. In addition, we have a collection of state appearances with six titles. Our exceptional student athletes worked hard towards their goal and 30 of them are graduating class signed with the college this year. Outside of our spectacular sports performances, our class has also racked up accomplishments within our performing arts as well, carrying the Brookwood name across the state, country, and even the world. Chorus, orchestra, and band have all received consistent superior ratings at large group performance evaluations, earning them prestigious invitational performances. Chorus got to represent Brookwood at Disney World, orchestra performed in Carnegie Hall in New York City, and our band got to march in the 2017 London New Year's Day Parade. Our theater troupe has also become acclaimed at a state level, becoming two-time region champions and state competition runner-ups. While none of this could have happened without our amazing teachers and all the hard work put in during the school day, our class has also had major accomplishments after school within our student-led clubs. Class of 2020 specifically has taken major steps of inclusivity by creating clubs advocating for groups at our school and within our community, like the Women in Science and Engineering Club, the African Student Association, the Muslim Student Association, and the Hispanic Organization Promoting Education. Our participation in clubs like these and others like SGA, 
Beta Club, and National Honor Societies has helped our school raise over $430,000 for charity, all within our four years of being at Brookwood. That definitely put a huge dent in our March to a Million, and our class had a major part in that. These past four years have flown by, but our class can rest easy knowing that we're a huge part of Brookwood's history and what we've accomplished. We conquered high school, and now we're on to our different paths in life. Brookwood has given us experiences, knowledge, and ambitions that will guide us through our future. And though this year did not end as we anticipated, we have definitely made our mark on Brookwood High School and in history as our year was transformed into something no one imagined. Thank you, Class of 2020. Hello, my name is Lydia Melka, and it's been my honor to serve as your senior class historian this past school year. Here we are at our baccalaureate. Clearly, it's looking a little different than we had originally pictured, but most of the things that we've pictured happening and celebrating together have had to look different. I'd like to offer a piece of encouragement, though, as we move forward. Class of 2020, though we've all had to let go of our own things in our own way, there's still one thing that connects us all, our cap and gowns. The cap and gown is important. It's the great equalizer, the one thing that every single graduating senior shares. It's the iconic senior look. It's wearing a cap that is harder than it looks to put on and a gown that vaguely makes you feel like a priest. Honestly, the cap and gown means something different to everyone, but as I took a look at the history of the tradition, it revealed something meaningful to me. There's a lot of speculation about where the standard of wearing a cap and gown originated. Some believe it was meant to distinguish those educated from the lay people of society. Others believe that it had a religious affiliation. Some believes it was just created to keep the heads and the bodies of graduates warm, which I don't think ever, ever, ever would be necessary at one of our gra Georgia graduations. My favorite explanation, though, is given through an anecdote from ancient Greece, which I will share with you now. Long ago, when formal education was for the very rich or the very determined, a wise old teacher was approached by a group of noblemen. Our sons have completed their studies, and it is time for them to return to their homes and live in the style befitting their station. Tomorrow we will present them at a great banquet. Be sure they are appropriately dressed in their finest robes. The following day, the banquet hall was filled with royalty dressed in dazzling finery. The great moment came when the students entered the banquet hall with their beloved teacher. A cry of disappointment arose from the crowd, for behold, their young men were dressed not in garments of the noble, but in simple robes of sackcloth, each carrying a mortar board, the mark of a common workman. What is the meaning of this? cried the nobleman. Our sons were to be dressed in their finest garments, but... They are, the teacher replied. Your sons are dressed in the clothing of the mason, for their destiny is to build. Some as architects will build cities, some as teachers will build lives, some as physicians will restore bodies, but all will be builders on the solid foundation of knowledge. And to this day, all graduates wear a cap and gown, proudly symbolizing the value of education and the fact that they are buildings of their future and the future of our world. I'm gonna be honest, I had to Google what a mason is. I could have used context clues and figured out that a mason is a type of builder, but upon my search, I, I found that a mason is a builder and a worker of stone. Stone isn't the easiest to work with unless you have the right tools. And if we are now masons, I can confidently say we have the tools we need. We've had teachers to stretch and grow us, teaching us perseverance, often through work we didn't wanna do. We have had friends who have helped us become more of ourselves leaving us more ready to contribute our strengths to the world. Even now, we have a pandemic that has the whole world rallying behind us and cheering us on through the unexpected. Class of 2020, we are well equipped. So as we go into this time of reflection tonight, let's focus on what's tangible, what connects us and what each and every single one of us has, our cap and gowns, a promise that we will build, grow and excel no matter the circumstance. Thanks to Ms. Rona, we've had lots of practice. Good evening, everyone, and congratulations to the class of 2020. My name is David Alvarez Sanchez, and it has been my honor to have served as your senior class secretary this past year. Joining us tonight is an individual who's continuously inspired others through NG3, an organization whose vision is to facilitate character development and small group mentoring in local high schools. The name NG3 is made up of NG, which stands for Next Generation, and 3, which corresponds with character development, community service, and positive change. Apart from serving in this program, Derek Heberling has served as a role model to others through his prior teaching and coaching careers at Central Gwinnett High School and Hebron Christian Academy. 
Despite competing against the Broncos in prior years, he's made his way back to Brookwood to help shape tomorrow's leaders. Mr. Ebeling has had the opportunity to leave a mark on several of our peers through his work with the football and basketball teams, as well as other activities and community service projects. When he is not working with NG3, he enjoys playing sports with his two children, Graham and Anna Blue, and loves to make it to as many Brookwood games as he can. As the husband of Mrs. Heberling and as someone who exhibits the values of Brookwood High School, we are truly delighted and grateful to have you here tonight. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Derek Heberling. Thank you, David, for the kind introduction. I am honored and grateful for the opportunity to be with you this evening. Class of 2020, congratulations. Parents of the class of 2020, congratulations. What a special class you are. This spring has been unlike any other, and you all weathered this so well probably much better than most of your parents. These times have been anything but simple and being a former PE teacher, I have struggled. I need simple things. And when Ms. Thompson asked me to give this baccalaureate speech, I told her, I thought you had the wrong guy. I'm a simple guy and I'm not sure I have any wisdom to impart to these highly educated Brookwood seniors. But then I remembered a very short, but simple, powerful message from a book I recently read. The Coffee Bean is a short read, only about 112 pages and lots of pictures, but it's packed full of incredible wisdom and insight. And if I could give a graduation gift to each of the graduate, it would be this book. The backstory behind The Coffee Bean starts with Damon West, a former college quarterback at North Texas University, turned into a hot shot Wall Street investor that made uh, some really poor decisions that led him to a conviction of life in prison. Before entering prison, he had a conversation with a former inmate that taught him a simple but powerful lesson. Tough situations happen. Sometimes we make poor decisions that land us in hot water. Or like this COVID-19, we're just placed in difficult and uncertain situations. I want to use boiling water, a carrot, an egg, and a coffee bean to demonstrate tough situations and the three different ways that we can react. So this boiling water is going to be our tough situation. We're gonna take a look first at a carrot. Carrot in its raw form is hard and flexible, but when you put it into boiling water, what happens? Man, it loses that, that hard and flexibility and is transformed by the environment turned into mush. And then we take that raw egg. Raw egg, as you crack it open, we can see it's Hard on the outside, but fluid and liquid on the inside. But when we pull an egg out of that boiling water, we turn and we see that it is not only hard on the outside, but now it's hard on the inside. It's transformed by the environment. That little coffee bean, a raw coffee bean is hard, but what happens when it is put into boiling water. And that coffee bean turns that water into coffee. Now I know I have the attention of, of adults now talking about coffee. That coffee bean is not transformed by its environment. It actually transforms the environment that it's in. I wanna take a look into three areas that I believe will help you to become the best coffee bean you can be. A faith foundation. What we build is only as good as what it is built on. I love the story told in the Bible in Matthew 7. The wise man builds his house on a solid rock, a firm foundation, while a fool builds on sand. And when the storm waters rise and the wind beats against the house, the house built on a firm foundation stands firm while the house built on the sand collapses. My faith in Jesus as my Lord and Savior is an anchor during my pressure situations. And your current foundation has been formed by so many. And as you enter into this new season of life, it will be your foundation. It will be your choice of what you put into your mind, your body, and your soul. One of my mother-in-law's favorite sayings is you get what you pay for. The cheap toilet paper is a great example of getting what you pay for that we've learned through this pandemic. If you put quick Feel good things into your mind, body, or soul that do not have substance and it will not fulfill you and will leave you always searching for more. Your faith foundation is crucial in navigating the storms of life that will come. Community. We were born in a community. We were raised in a great Brookwood community. 
You were born for community. Family, friends, teachers, coaches, community of people in your life that help guide and mold you into the young men and women that you are today. That community will change now as you become more independent. Less doing for you and more consulting and advising with you. Communication with your community will be more crucial than ever. You will need different things from different people and it will take time, practice, failure to learn how to communicate what you need. Don't be afraid to ask, but understand your community's job is to help you grow in your independence. So you need to prepare yourself for the possibility of a different response from your community than, than you're probably used to. But know that you are never alone and we are all rooting for you. We would love to have you come home for a warm meal that is not made in a microwave. We love you and we want you the very, very best for you. Even though that may mean having to watch you fail and go through difficult seasons, but know that you are strong and we know that you will learn and grow. And the third area is you. Class of 2020, there has never been more technology available and you've been educated by some of the finest educators, principals, counselors, coaches, support staff in the world here at Brookwood. You have been cruelly trained by this coronavirus on the unfairness of life. You are ready for the ups and downs of life because Brookwood has taught you lessons that reach far beyond the walls of the school. You can do this. Even when things get difficult, have the belief that you can. There are not many guarantees that I can make, but I can guarantee you that your life will be filled with pressure situations. Some you will create for yourselves. Some just happen. You will have to have grit to overcome those times. Under pressure, the carrot is transformed by its environment and it loses its flexibility and toughness. And then as we see with that egg under pressure, it is transformed to hard on the inside. You will need love during your tough moments in life. And it's extremely difficult, near impossible to give or receive love when our hearts are too hardened. Under pressure, the coffee bean transforms its environment. We're created to transform our environments that we are in, but not alone. One coffee bean can transform an environment, but won't make a very satisfying cup of coffee. A strong faith foundation, a loving community, and an unwavering belief in yourself not only makes you the best coffee bean you can be, but it makes a much better cup of coffee. Our situations are not always our own doing. And even if they are, it's not always possible to control it. All we can control is our reaction. I encourage you to be a coffee bean and transform your environment. Thank you, Brookwood, and congratulations, class of 2020. God bless. To close out baccalaureate, we want to say a very special thank you to Mr. Ford, the Brookwood administration, our senior class sponsor, Ms. Thompson, and all of the teachers and mentors who have guided us throughout the years. In addition, we thank our friends and families for their guidance and support that they have provided us for our years in high school. We accomplished one of the greatest milestones in our lives and we worked hard for it. We take this time to also thank ourselves for opening opportunities to work towards new goal. The class of 2020 has grown into patience, resilience, and determination. And in the future, may we carry these values that Brookwood has given us for the rest of our lives. Brookwood High School and the surrounding community will forever be on our hearts. We thank everyone for being a part of it. Mm -hmm.